Well, hello and happy uh, Veterans Day. My name is Dan Vasquez, and I'm so happy that you are here with us. And uh, welcome to our show. And today is a very special day because we have a wonderful guest, Mr. Bert Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for coming with us. Glad to be here, Dan. How are you doing today? I'm always good, Dan. Yes. I don't go, it doesn't matter how I feel. What's the word say? Word says, I'm the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. I feel great. That's right. I that's feel right. Great. Yes. yes, and you look great, too. Thank you. So, M Mr. Lindsay, you are originally from? From Washington Courthouse, Fayette County. Here, here in Ohio. Ohio. Yes. So. Grew up as a farmer. Really? Yeah, I plowed a lot of fields. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Planted a lot of seed. Yeah. Bailed a lot of hay. <laughs> And now, but now you, you do something different. You're now the owner of Lindsay Hyundai, Lindsay Acura, Lindsay GMC, and Lindsay Buick. Buick. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's quite a transition from farming into car. Yeah, from the from the fields of Washington Courthouse to to Columbus, Ohio. It's been a great journey. Listen, I'm so excited that you're here with us, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm I'm really I've been uh, expecting to. To hear your story sure. and to and to find out about your beginnings yeah. and to tell us your journey yeah. and to um, and to tell us how did you get to where you are today. Yeah. So let's start with that. Tell us a little bit about well, you. Well, Dan, I I have growing up as a child, I always liked motorcycles, engines, uh -huh. anything to do with toys. You know, that's what kids do, right? So as I matured, I I wanted to stay in to riding motorcycles. So I had a dirt bike. I would go out and ride a dirt bike and. Then when I got a little more money from working, I worked in the tire business. Okay. Uh, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Wow. Spent five years there, and Goodyear gave me a good basis for their their motto was protect our good name. Well, mm. that's that's key today. You know, cl customer satisfaction and and having a good name in the industry. And the Bible even refers to the fact that good name's better than riches. Better, and if you have a good name, involved. guess what, Dan? It brings riches. That's right. See, so we really are concentrated on customer service, making customers our friends. And this is how I got into business. I tried to go out and buy a motorcycle. And when I was doing that, I had transitioned into the car business, uh, working at a dealership. So I would go into a, a motorcycles dealership dressed like I am now, just happened to like ties. You know, fools everybody, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you think you, you don't have a tie, see? No, so, I don't have a tie. No. So I'm, I'm faking everybody out here. <laughs> But anyway, I would go in and uh, try to buy a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Well, they wouldn't give me the time of day because I was dressed too nice. Really? And I'm thinking, you know, they wouldn't acknowledge who you are. And mm -hmm. I'd wander around. I'd sit on motorcycles. And I knew a lot about them. And it's like if you wanted help, you had to make them come over and talk to you. Wow. So what goes off in my mind is I see a great opportunity. I said, what if you treated people like you were happy to see them? Wow. So I talked to this gentleman who I was working for at the time. I said, if we would start a motorcycle dealership and treated people like we were happy to see them, gave them customer service, we could probably do great. Well, we did overly great. We wow. sold so many motorcycles. We were the largest wow. motorcycle dealership in the state of Ohio. Oh my goodness, wow. And the consequences of that, Dan, was I was making so much money, I got fired. How is that possible? <laughs> well. The other company he owned, I was making three times the amount of money that, that the other managers were. Wow. And so they were all disgruntled because here's this kid down here. How old were you at the time? 25. Wow. So I, here's what I determined, Dan. I said, I will never, that'll never happen again. <laughs> I, I will never get fired for making too much money. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. Well, I hadn't either, but I, I'm <laughs> glad it happened. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason to get fired. So I determined I would never have anybody mm -hmm. holding me back. You see, mm -hmm. God gives you the ability to capture wealth. Mm -hmm. He says that in Deuteronomy 28. He says he will make a way for you. And so I went out and tried to pursue getting my own dealership. And I went from point to point and you know, it's easy to get discouraged, yeah. but I didn't. <laughs> and I finally found an opening where I was able to buy an existing dealership. It was a Honda dealership. Wow. So Honda Motorcycles in 1973, wow. I purchased a dealership. I had a partner to help me do that at the time because I had no money. All I had was a lot of ambition, you know. <laughs> but uh, got that started and guess what happened in 1973? You remember the oil embargoes? Mm -hmm. Nobody could get gasoline. Right? right, right. So anybody that ever thought about a motorcycle, if you ever wanted to buy a motorcycle, what happens? 
hey, honey, if I buy a motorcycle, I can save all this gasoline. Yeah. So my first year in business was unbelievable. <laughs> but again, that was a God set. Yes. See, God set that up for me. Mm -hmm. So in my first year, I was able to get make such an abundance of money that I was well capitalized, didn't have a care in the world. You know, it just like came, you know. And so we were able to pay off a lot of debt the first year in business. Wow. I mean, the super natural God, if you're just willing to keep stepping forward, yeah. he's going to come along with you. Yes. And everything that I've done, so they came to me in 1975 and asked me if I want to sell these silly little cars that Honda made. You know, you, you and I could barely fit in one, day. <laughs> and I said, sure, I didn't know any better. They were the Asian model. They were little, tiny, 10-inch yeah. wheels. Wow. You and I would be shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> it would run top speed to the floor, I think it was 60 mile an hour. Wow. But anyhow, I said, sure, I'll sell them. And it's been history from there. Every year they made bigger cars, better cars, mm -hmm. uh, high quality cars. Yeah. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And, you know, and seeing what happens there as you reflect back, that wasn't me. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't that good. I wasn't that smart. But the plan of God was. And he, so, he showed us supernatural favor. Mm -hmm. And we just continued to sell more cars. And, and we've grown now into a facility that's 188,000 square feet. Oh, my goodness. But, again, it was another gift from God, that yeah. special deal. And we've become now the... The largest, we're fifth largest in the nation out of 1,379 dealers. Wow. And that's just, no, it takes work. I'm not telling you just sit back and, <laughs> and uh, wait for the customers to roll in. Uh -huh. You know, you have to have a good organization. You have to have good people working for you. And as I have found, people are your, who you are. And you have to have people that are, you know, when I look to hire somebody, you know, if they got the nice factor going, they're probably going to get hired. I don't care about your ability. I don't care about your acuity. Yeah. If you're nice, we can use you. Wow. So you yeah. got to be able to work, be nice and work. Yeah. See, but where, where did you get this work ethic? Uh, what inspired you or where, where did you get it? When from? I grew up as a child, I didn't, nobody gave me anything. If I wanted a bicycle, I spent three months selling Christmas cards to earn enough points to get a bicycle. Wow. See, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you know, I wasn't ha handed a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I learned on if I want something, I'm going to have to work for it. Yeah. And I wasn't afraid to work for it. And I'm wow. still not. I'm, I'm not retired, and I'm not going to retire. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, there's too much to do. Yes. How long have you been in the business now? 47 years. 47 years. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh, I love it. It's, it's a great business. And uh, approximately how many people are, are working for you now? About 325. That's incredible. Yeah, it is wow. incredible. Started with seven. Wow. <laughs> there was just seven of us when we initially launched, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, just a small band of guys gathered together and had a vision. Yeah. And here's the thing about I have found in life. If you have vision, God's going to give you the provision. So he'll provide, if you're trusting him, he'll give you whatever you need at the time you need it. Mm -hmm. So I've spent a lot of time calling upon God and saying, what's next, Lord? How are we going to make this happen? Mm -hmm. He'll send people. He'll send favor. There'll be special things happen. You know, and it's just, it's, it's an amazing walk. I'm not doing this alone. Right. And, and I love that you don't uh, take the credit for yourself. No. And that you don't, you know, um, you don't succeed and you're not saying that you did it. No, I that's, didn't. That's incredible. You know who really does it? Mm -hmm. Happy customers. Wow. Happy customers make everything possible. So to you, the customer is the priority. It's they, at the top of your Yes, list. our customers are our friends. Wow. And we have to treat them like that. Yes. You know. Yes. You know, Mr. Lindsay, one thing I've, I've, I've learned is that um, God does not bless um, good intentions, even if they're good. Right. It's only actions. He right. can only bless actions. He can only bless what we do. Well, don't get me started on that, Dan. Because <laughs> here's, here's what I have found. I've been walking with the Lord probably, let's see, my 40 some years mm -hmm. okay and i've met a lot of people with good intentions <laughs> yeah and the road to hell's paved with good intentions wow you know think about it you know they always i'm going to i'm going to well god's very gracious you know i i happen to bring i have a manual i like to use a manual mm -hmm. because if you buy a car you buy a motorcycle there's a book that tells you how to operate it right yes well here's my operating manual 
Wow, and my operating manual tells me in here, if I ask of the Lord, he's going to help me. Yes. And if I'm lacking wisdom, he says, he'll grant me wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so many Christians, many people in businesses are asking and asking and asking, how do I do this? Well, God's going to give you the answer. He says he will give you wisdom, and he'll give you wisdom liberally, which means a lot, right? Yes. The trouble with most people, they don't get off their ask. <laughs> Yeah. They keep asking and asking and asking. Right. Now you go later in James where it speaks about that. And then he says, you must do what God says. Mm -hmm. See, it's in the doing. Mm -hmm. So some shoe companies even have a motto that says, just do it. Right? right, right. Well, guess what? I know people that wear those shoes and still don't do anything. Right. <laughs> now think about it. So here's, yeah. where, here's the missing link, Dan, mm -hmm. and you, you might have some educational people listening to me. I, I pity them if they're trying to gain anything out of me. But <laughs> See, the thing about the doing, it's not in the doing. It's in the did. Mm. See, if something's did, it's, it's did. It can't go any further. Right. You can still be doing something and never finish. Mm -hmm. But if you did it, it's did. Yeah. Now, is that a little... A little bit of a mind tweezer, right? Right, right. I mean, you got to, but I have this thing that I talk about. Did you did it? Mm. Now, the nice thing about the did from my perspective, it's a divine inspirational direction, mm -hmm. the did. And God will drop into you how to, how to did it, how to yes. get it finished, how to make it happen. And then you can orchestrate things, see? My life is an orchestrator. I've got all these instruments and I've got to get everybody playing on the same note. And so we go through life just helping direct people to success. That's, that's fun. That is fun. What are some of the uh, major obstacles that you encounter when you were getting started? As you're starting a business, uh, you run out of cash real fast. <laughs> you know, but see, as I told you earlier, because what happens is, you know, payday comes on Friday mm -hmm. and you haven't sold anything. So one time we were at such a point, I had to sell my car to go get enough money to make the payroll that week. Wow. So it's not like everything's just a bowl of cherries and, you know, a bouquet of roses. Right. There are trials uh -huh. and you're stretched. But the hand of God being when, when I opened business and then that oil embargo hit, boom. I mean, my gosh, the money came. That was 1973. Yeah. Wow. I mean, wow. people were buying, I actually went to Canada uh -huh. and bought motorcycles. I paid retail for them in Canada because okay. of the exchange rate. Yes. So I could go to a dealer in Canada and buy the bike for what he wanted to sell it for retail, bring it down here and sell it because I still had the ability to make a margin. Wow. And we, we trucked motorcycles from Canada. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. You could have been done saying we're out of motorcycles. Mm. No. You have to think differently. You have to be a contrarian. Just because we're out of motorcycles in America doesn't mean there aren't motorcycles available. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. So I looked up north and I called somebody. Hey, you got any motor? Yeah, we got bikes to sell. Good, I'll take a hundred of them. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said, I'll buy a hundred of them. And I did. But see, that's the contrarian thinking. Mm. You got to go outside the box. And so, you know, we, we we really, you know, I, are, are just a little bit peculiar. I think the Bible even speaks about that, being a peculiar person. Yes. Just don't stay in the norm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about this new normal. I'm not going to participate. You know, yeah. we make our normal. Yeah. Okay. God said in his word, he will be the lamp unto our feet and the director of our pathways. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow what he lights up. Yes. I know there's success at the end, Dan. Yeah. And, oh, and we have multi, we probably have nine companies total, but wow. everything we touch, everybody says that everything you touch turns to gold. I know, no, no. Everything we do, God blesses. Mm. See, and God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Mm -hmm. So I can't be running an organization like I am on my own. I'm not that smart. I have to have the favor of God. Yeah. People show up because kind of like they just want to see us. You know, what are we doing here? 
You know, it's just, it's just like, it's not like you're just running an ad and everybody comes to your dealership. We just have the ability to connect with people, work with people, be fair. You know, car business is hard business, very competitive. Yes. But in, in the end, we are not making a lot of money off one person. We make a little bit of money off of a lot of people. See, yeah. that's the way it works. That's why we sell almost a thousand cars a month. Oh my goodness, almost a thousand cars a month. Well, sometimes more than that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but that, that's again, favor of God. Yeah. You yeah. know. Wow, that's incredible. It's a fun journey. Yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of, of our young people um, watching us. Sure. And they are lost. They don't know what to, where to start, where mm -hmm. to go. And, and you touched on an important word, vision. Mm -hmm. And um, how would you say, how, how, or what would you tell to a young person who doesn't know what their vision is? Well, let me back up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Young people, you do not have a money problem. Period. Mm -hmm. All you have is a knowledge problem. Mm. Okay. If you have knowledge, if you have wisdom, the money comes. Okay. So, out of your heart flows the vision you find what you like to do and then you equate that to can I find a place in the world to attach myself that I can enjoy my heart's desire see my heart's desire Dan was I love motorcycles yeah. I like cars I like people <laughs> so I'm right in the center of what I want to do just put them all together yeah, and just do yeah. you know I, I would not be a particular uh, good at a computer. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a computer on my desk for probably 10, 20 years. Wow. I still use a pen, uh -huh. give me a piece of paper. See, mm -hmm. here's one thing about vision. Write the vision, mm -hmm. make it plain, and here's what happens. In the middle of the night, you'll get an idea. You get up in the morning, that idea is gone. You ever had that happen to you? Yes, no, many times. <laughs> so here's what I say. Write the vision, make it plain. Now catch this one. If you think it, ink it. Oh, I like that. If you think it, If ink you it. think it, ink it. You don't have to have any sophisticated computers or iPads or smartphones. If you think it, write it down. Mm -hmm. I, I created an invention on a piece of a napkin, you know, they always talk about these <clears throat> lunch and napkin lunches. Uh -huh. Great ideas come out of napkin lunches. So I invented a product on a napkin. I've got a patent for it. Wow. Okay. And it is a phenomenal idea. I can't tell you about it. <laughs> but it'll, you'll see it someday. But it's like God dropped this into my mind. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down, drew little pictures of it, kept looking at it. God kept lining up different parts of it, bringing me, some, this guy knew this, this guy knew that, so that you're able to take that idea, develop it, and make it come to fruition. So the ability to not know what you're doing or what your vision is, ask God, mm -hmm. who will give you the wisdom, the ideas, the vision to make it happen. Mm. And it comes, you know. The heart and God are connected, guys. Yeah. God wants to connect your mind, your heart, and he wants you to be productive. And when he says Deuteronomy, he gives you the ability to capture wealth. He does. And one thing that I'm gathering a lot from what you're saying is that what you do, you love. You, you, have, you, you, right. you have to love what you do. Right. That has to be a part passion. of Passion. Yes. Yeah. Passion. Yeah. You got you to gotta love it. Yeah. You know, and there's all kinds... What has made America great? The, the freedom to do and be who you want to be. Yes. You know, it's just, we live in a wonderful country. Absolutely. And we can, we can take our skills and our ideas. Now, see, God also says in the word, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, you're going to start small. Okay. It's going to start as a little thing. And then you can see it grow. I mean, I hate to give things like Facebook credit, but let's face it, that was a couple of guys, right? Yeah. In a dorm room in Massachusetts, and they just... Well, think about it. I mean, a couple of guys get together, what if? Yeah. 
I mean, you got to realize there is a lot of potential out there. And if you have the wisdom, and God will give you that wisdom, he will show you the pathway, he will light your way, and you can, you can make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we have to use the resources beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. So, um, you, you talked about the wonderful thing about America. Mm -hmm. I, I recently became an American about a year and a few months ago. Oh. I went through the process. It took me 10 years. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And I'm so proud. Oh, and yeah. I'm so happy because in my previous country, um, there <clears> were <throat> so many things that we were told, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And you can't right. do that. And when I came here, uh, nobody was telling me I couldn't do it. Right. And, and it just changed everything. Right. So uh, that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing about you know, this nation. Well, this is an important thing about parenting, though. If you're a mom and dad, believe in your kids. Yes. The four most important words any child ever wants to hear is, I believe in you. Wow. Now think about it. Wow. I believe in you, son. Mm -hmm. I believe in you, daughter. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. You implant that into a child, there's no stopping. No stopping. What can you tell us about family and business? Ah, it gets interesting. <laughs> I have three children, adult children. They're all married, nine grandchildren. Wow. Um, family and business is a, an opportunity because we have to, there has to be a transition mm -hmm. between dad and child. And believe me, it's hard for dad to not still want to see him as a child. Mm -hmm. But they're 40 and 50 years old now. <laughs> and so you've got to lose them, right? Uh -huh. But uh, they've all earned their spots. They work hard. They're... they're uh, earning their successes through their own abilities. Mm -hmm. um, we have to find where their giftings are. Yeah. You see, they're not always, I might say, I want you to do this. That wasn't the right place, mm -hmm. see. But when you find the area of gifting for them, then, then they're happier and they, they can grow in their own elements too. So you just kind of segment what's best for them. Yeah. You know, what, what can they do best? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're finally getting there. It's, That's it, awesome. it's not without opportunities. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you don't call them challenges, you call them opportunities, right? Opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so we're excited to get some questions from our audience. Sure. And uh, this question is from uh, Kayla. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, with the size of your business, how do you maintain connection with all employees, including entry-level workers? Okay, first thing, I don't sit behind a desk. Kayla, I'm out with you. I'm out working with you. I'm out walking around. Wow. I want to know you. I want you to be appreciated. I sign checks. I don't print stamp. We had to go find this direct deposit. I hate that. <laughs> you know, it's like so impersonal. Yeah. Yes. You yes. know, I, I like to see a guy work, hand him a check, say thank you, and he goes deposits. Anymore, it's just like this electronic zip line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no personal connection. Uh -huh. So I, I'm still old school, Dan. I, I like, I like to see my people, talk to my people, uh -huh. walk around. Now, I'll tell you, at the size we are now, 325 so people, I say, who's this guy? How long has he been here? <laughs> it's like, you know. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. I try to find him. Well, he's not on this shift, so sometimes it'll take me a month or two to track him down or track and her down. And you purposely will go and track him I down? try to find him. Wow. <laughs> you know? That's great. want to make sure they're real. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But no, we... Uh, We've, every year I've been in business, I've had a Christmas party. Wow. You know, and we, we bring the family, because uh -huh. the business is about the family unit. Mm -hmm. um, one of my biggest successes comes from one purpose, closed on Sunday. Mm. I'm closed on Sunday for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now you figure out the reason. Yes. I'll leave that to you guys. But that's family time. That's a time for you to rest. Dealerships and businesses that run seven days a week, to me, have no appreciation for their employees. Mm. And I, I, I also have a five-day work week mandate, mm -hmm. whereas most dealerships want six days, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They just, no, we have a respectful working schedule. Mm -hmm. And so your people are fresh. They can go home, spend time with their families. What good is there in, it says on my door, closed on Sunday, spending time with our families. That's our mm -hmm. motto, that's who we are. Yeah. So we engage with the employee. We ask them, what would you like yeah. that we can make your life better? Wow. You know. Because their success is eventually your success. 
that's a simple principle, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Wow. That's that's incredible. Yeah. And um, what are some of the, the the things you do to appreciate um, you know the, the employees? Like, how do you? Well, we always have monthly uh, attaboys, you know, uh -huh. accolades awesome. for different people. Sell so many cars. Uh, serve so many customers uh, you know uh, we have an annual big sales event with all the salespeople the technicians we have an Eagles Club if they do certain things they they make higher grades the thing about business is it's, it's not all about the money it is about am I acknowledged and appreciated mm -hmm. so we work hard at that to make sure they understand we do appreciate it uh, I was I was reading a report and the number one reason why people left their jobs is because they didn't feel appreciated mm -hmm. so uh, I agree with you as far as how, how important that is yeah yeah yes yeah. that's, that's terrific people well in my check when it says right on the check happy customers make this check possible wow think about it not me and that's written down on the on the well, checks happy customers make your ch this check possible uh -huh. and that's really the bottom line yeah yeah so if we're all treating our customers well now we hiccup my guys you know we see over 10,000 20,000 people a month wow well in service and uh -huh. sales transactions we hiccup <laughs> you know yeah. we can't always we're not 100 percent but we're, we're we're batting the high 90s you know mm, wow and we work hard yeah. at it yeah so. so um what what is it uh, for the future what do you see in the future in the car industry and and what's what's going on well one thing that i will say again god placed me in the right place mm -hmm. the honda products are are built with much higher quality than the sticker price i mean i know a lot about all kinds of cars but when it comes to the bearings the engines the the, the way the car is constructed our cars are far superior to much more expensive automobiles. Mm. They really are. And our customers are driving these cars, 100, 200,000, 300,000, <clears> you know. They hand the cars down to their children. You know, the cars just go and go and go. Their resale value stays. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the Bible's real plain. It says in Acts 1, we're all to be in one accord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's, that's really good. <laughs> some people will get that. Some won't. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, no, it, it just is the fact that, you know, when you have a high value, high quality product, uh -huh. you know, you can, it makes life easy. It really does. Yeah. Easier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, what is like one day in your shoes? What is like, like a day for you from morning to night? Well, first thing you do in the morning is get your manual out okay and figure out where you're going yes you know I I like to read the manual the manual says here trust in the Lord and do good dwell and enjoy the land and enjoy safe pasture take delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart so if you okay. do that he grants you the desires of your heart yes so I you know, and I and some people are worried about this COVID. I've chosen not to participate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Because again, I've I've got this manual here, and this manual says in Psalms 91. You know how you dial the phone 911. Yes. Psalms 911. Wow. You wow. dial the manual. Yeah. He says right here. If we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, okay, and say He's my fortress. We will be f saved from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence, okay? And you will not fear the terror of day, nor the air at night, nor the plague that stalks by day, or the plague that destroys at midday. You see, I have this assurance. The Lord is my refuge. Mm -hmm. So how do I start my day? Here. This is all my promises. And every morning you start. So I start out yeah. knowing what God has for me. Okay. You know, so then I go to work. <laughs> and there's set routines. Uh -huh. You know, you've got, I, I go around, you know, I, I sign every check what's written. Wow. I sign 20 some thousand checks a month. Oh my goodness. But I'm watching 
engaging. There's a funny thing that happens. People don't realize in a business that everything matters. Hmm. Everything matters. And a, a dripping faucet could end up being $1,000 a year. Wow. You know, um, you find certain items you purchase a lot of. I was looking at a uh, uh, certain cartridge we use, a Brother 2270 cartridge, mm -hmm. and I'm buying them for $42 a piece. Well, we use a lot of them. I found where you could get them for $37 a piece. You multiply that savings of $5 times a year, and all of a sudden there's $60. All of a sudden there's $170, or $720. You see, it's not the money you make, it's how you spend it. Mm. And I'm a very detailed guy. Because a big ship, I don't care how big it is, if it's got a leak, it'll sink. Right. Right. <laughs> so I go around trying to patch leaks yes. and find the holes because you're throwing cash in the top yes. and you don't keep it if it keeps running out the bottom. Mm. So detail. Detail. Paying attention to detail. You know how many people don't know how to handle money? Okay, they never have any money. Mm -hmm. I said, let me ask you a question. What's your internet, your cable bill, and your phone bill? Oh, I don't know. Well, I asked one guy that. It was over $200 a month. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I said, first of all, there's probably some programs there you don't need. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's me. But I said, what's all these bundles I see on TV? A bundle saying for $49, you get t cable, phone. I said, why don't you call up your current carrier and say, hey, I see these deals. Guess what they say? We've got deals. Yeah. But if you never ask, you never get. So let's say you reduce your your cable bill by $100 a month. That's $12,000 or $1,200. Right. See, that's money you don't have to earn. That's newfound money. Mm -hmm. I operate, I love finding money. When you ask me what I love to do, uh -huh. I love finding money. That's amazing. And you find money because you start paying attention to what you're spending. Mm -hmm. It's not how, how much you make, it's how you spend it. Wow. Now, I'm not cheap and chintzy, mm -hmm. But if there's, why pay $5 more for the same thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. why? Yeah. It doesn't make any same sense. Same box, same everything. Uh -huh. And especially when the things that you use multitudes of, mm -hmm. you know, volumes of. Mm -hmm. And so you look at, like your copy paper, you look at everything that you're doing in a mm -hmm. business. Uh, you, you have to realize you've got to be able to be a good steward. See, I, I see it as stewardship. Mm -hmm. And you know, because God calls us to be sensible and, and take care of the blessing he gives us. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't keep it all. I like to funnel it back into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it's like a river. It goes out, comes back in. Well, I also know you have uh, a great heart for the community. Yes. And, um, and you are doing things here in the community. And um, what, what are some of your goals? What are some of the things that you would like to see, see here in the southeast part of Columbus? Well, there's no greater reward than seeing, having the ability to change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're in slavery, we're captive, mm -hmm. we can't get out of it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it needs an injection of perspective. Like I have a business perspective. I see issues pretty, pretty quick. And I know the family units are breaking down. Well, we're trying to to help the family units right now. Mm -hmm. Because with this COVID shutting down, no schools, mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got kids sitting at home staring at a computer screen. Mm -hmm. What kind of life is that? Right. And I doubt if they're really doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. So there's an organization in town that we're, we're partnering with called the Dream Center. And I have a building over here that's empty and I took the dealership showroom and we bought in 80 desks and we can have students come there because it's all social distance. They can sit there and bring their computers supplied by the Columbus City Schools. They can sit there and do their homework in a supervised environment. But guess what? They can look up and smirk at a kid, or they can look up and wink, or they might even throw a spitball at them. <laughs> yeah. But see, they're connecting. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? And then we have a little social time for them to go out and play basketball. Wow. These kids are just starving. 
And the isolation is not good. It's not helping anybody. Yeah. So we're trying to facilitate for the community the ability to come in and let us just have your children for two or three hours and socialize. It costs them nothing. Uh -huh. You know why it's not costing me anything? <laughs> I'm just trying to help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I did have to put in high-speed internet because they come in with 20 computers and you gotta, right. <laughs> you gotta be able to power those things up. Uh -huh. But no, that, it, we're here to give back to the community. America is fi founded on helping the neighbor, help mm -hmm. thy neighbor. You know, help people out of times of trouble. Um, the church is a great organization to do that also. We have some churches that have joined us and in their schools, they're versus sitting empty five days a week, now they're trying to bring a few students in. Again, oh, just to help these kids get mm -hmm. out of this just isolation. Winter's yeah. coming. Yeah. It's gonna get real lonely sitting in a, a room staring out the walls. Yeah. So this is just an initiative. It's called the Dream Center. Uh -huh. And uh, we're excited about it. Trying to help. We got and, other and visions. How many for organizations are now joining you or have been in contact with, with this? We, we started out initially just saying, hey guys, how can we help your community? Give uh -huh. us the needs. We found out that workforce development, helping people find a job of some type other than flipping hamburgers. Yes. See? But here's the thing. You can't be what you don't see. So we're trying to bring them into an environment where you can see the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Come in, young man, and watch these guys change oil and work on cars. Some people can work with their hands and can't do, can't do real well speaking. They're not, you got some people that are outgoing and friendly yeah. so they can sell. So you just show them the gamut of what's available uh -huh. in life. So they see it and they start thinking, you know, I might want to do that. Because when you talk about creating a vision, you got to see something you want to do. Right, right. Okay? Uh, sitting there with a video game all day long, yeah, that might be something. I'm not sure how that pays though. Right. <laughs> you can't live with that. You know, you got to find something to do with your hands, something mm -hmm. to do with your mind. So we're trying to help our area be exposed to that. And uh, if I remember correctly, you also have a program for young people that are interested in, in uh, an internship, learning about cars, yeah, learning right. how to fix cars. Right. You know, that's a, that's a very handy thing. Yeah. And, you know we, know, we know there are millions of cars in America, and if you have that yeah. skill to, can you tell us more about that? Well, the, the, the program is that, again, there are those that are leaning towards liking car. I see, I want to do what I like. Yes. <laughs> so if you got a young man that would like to work on cars and Hondas are very popular. Yes. And you know, then we have a, I have an instructor that works for me that used to work for one of the state colleges and he'll take these under his wing and he'll teach them step by step how to do things right. There are techniques, there are things required to do things right. So we, we train them up and then when they can, you can, a technician can get easily at a 50,000 plus income pretty quick. That's, that's not bad at all. It spends. Yes. <laughs> well, we're getting questions in and uh, that's, that's great. Let me see. Um, here's another question. There can often be disputes between family members and a family business. Did you, do you experience this conflict? If so, how do you handle this? Well, actually the best thing I have found, it, it takes a third party. You see, because you've got to find that third party to help insulate between you and them. Okay. Because the parent and the child or young adult, there's always that overpower. Uh -huh. And it's not a lack of respect. It's a lack that, you know, the father's put in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. And the, the young person's supposed to respect them, which they do, but yet they want to rise up. And sometimes this is the conflict you get in. You know, and so through a third party, I've had a guy, now dad, soften up here a little bit, mm. <laughs> okay? And then, <laughs> son, explain what you want. You see what I mean? Yeah. And don't think that he's always putting you down, he's just trying to guide you, see? So really the only, the only suggestion I could make is that they go find a third party counselor okay. to hear both sides, then bring them together. That's and it great. takes covenant. I have to agree to certain things. That's good wisdom. I have to agree. Yeah. Okay, son, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's that's good wisdom. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, if there was a word that described you, what would that word be? Well, I'll tell you what. I 
thinking about myself, I accomplished a mountain of stuff. I'm just a mountain mover. Uh -huh. You know, I've, yeah. I've always got an idea. I always see something. I'm very, I have very high expectations. You know, I run on a lane of, I'm particular. But if you're not, if you don't have high expectations, you'll never get high, ex high results. Right. Um, I think we're, we're required to be people of faith, okay? And I have to guard my heart, even mm -hmm. my situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to guard what comes at me all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want to see myself as a man of faith who thinks fairness, that, I, that I'm truthful about what I do. Um, retirement is not in, the, not in my mind. I, that's never going to happen. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go that. and go and go. Yes. Because I love what I do. That's awesome. And helping people and, and seeing people succeed. You know, I'll tell you another thing. When you have a young man that comes to you and he's worked for you about five years, and he says, Mr. Lindsay, I want you to know I bought a half million dollar house yesterday. Wow. Now, I'm telling you, there, there's something about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's got himself, he did it himself. Mm -hmm. All I did was facilitate the opportunity. Mm. But he took hold of that opportunity and he bought a half million dollar house. I mean, that's there's a incredible. lot of reward in that, and I'm yeah. proud of him. I'm proud that some young man can that's do amazing. that. That's amazing. Just show, all you have to do was show them that there's more. Yeah. Show them that there's opportunity. Right. How how would you define success? It's not about the money. Mm. You know, success doesn't come through how big your checking account. Mm. Success comes through how significant you are. Wow. What are you doing that is significant? Wow. So. You know, yeah, we sell a lot of cars. Yeah, we have a lot of buildings. Yeah, God's blessed us a lot. But I hope that my legacy in the end is that, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm. You've fought the fight. You've taken on the task. And you've accomplished the work that I had before you. I love that. Wow, I love that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, here's another question from our audience. What standards do you, do you hold all employees to? Um, if there is conflict, how do you handle conflict among employees? Well, you do have to have a handbook. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got this one. Uh -huh. I also have a, a personal company <laughs> handbook. Uh -huh. And it does describe a lot of do's and don'ts. Because you would think things that we would just assume people would, would know no. and do, mm -hmm. they wouldn't do. Uh, so we've got the typical zero toleration for drugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be a place of ministry. We're, we're, a place, we, we're a place of work. Yes. Okay. I can't afford to have 300 and some employees coming to me and saying, Mr. Lindsay, I, I didn't do that. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm here to help you f foster success in the mm -hmm. right environment. Now, we have forgiveness. Okay. And we have, we do have a, a drug rehab if you, for, for only like marijuana use. Wow. I mean, we'll give you a second chance. Wow. Some That's stuff great. is zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just certain things we have zero tolerance for. Okay. And we have zero tolerance for marijuana. Mm -hmm. we, what we want people to succeed in life. Yeah. And so we'll forgive them. Um, Actually, what I think is pretty nice, we don't have a lot of conflict between the employees. You know That's why? That's awesome. Because we hire nice people. <laughs> and yeah. if there's a conflict, it's usually heard out and everybody can talk about it. Okay, but, so let me ask you. So when you're going to hire somebody, what are some of the qualities that you look for? Or what, what are some of the things that you're paying attention when you're looking at somebody to bring in? Well, see, one thing God gives us is the ability to discern. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't care what your resume s says. Somebody help you write it. <laughs> you know, yeah. They can write you a pretty story, right? Uh -huh. What I care about is when I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your eyes and I'm seeing your heart and I'm hearing what you say, I have a discerning ability. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've hired a few people we shouldn't have hired. Wow. <laughs> now, I don't hire everybody now. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, the first time I meet him, I go, shouldn't have hired him. Wow. I'm usually right. Uh -huh. Because we're, I don't want self-serving people. Yeah. People who have a heart of service is who I want. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
See, because here's the thing. If you serve, it will come. Yes. See, if you're willing to be a servant, the mm. money comes. I'm not there for the guy who wants to take, 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 take. Yeah. I'm not into the taking. Mm -hmm. We're into the giving. Yeah. We want you to be the giver, and then you become a receiver. See, I'm a receiver, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm a giver and a receiver. Yeah. But I give first. Wow. Wow. I love that. Great. Um, somebody's asking, how can a youth join the internship program at the at Lindsay, or, or is there an opportunity for a young person to come in and, and check it Do out? Do they live in the area? I mean, first of all, you have to be within our area. Okay. Uh, it's always best if you've been to trade school first. Mm -hmm. Because, see, we, we, we're not going to start you at this is a boat and this is a rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... So the first thing you need to do is you need to go into a trade school and get the basic parameters of what it is. Mm -hmm. Then you can come into the um, HR department and, and inquire about it, and then you'll be interviewed. Okay. Because the thing is, we will help those who are already kind of saying, I'm getting into it. Not that we're not into trying it. See, we can, we're beyond the trying stage. Okay. You understand? Yeah, you yes. have to say, I'm not here to try out this. I'm not here to try to be. I'm here to be one. Okay. So if yes. you want to be one, then we're going to help you. Yeah. You understand the difference? Yes, yes. So if you want to be a technician, you want to be a salesman, you want to be in accounting, you want to work in a bank, you want to be in the insurance business, I've got them all. See, we, we have all these parameters. So if you want to be one, uh -huh. then we will help you get there. Now, sometimes to be one, we might have to say, first go through this training course and then come in, and then, and then we'll take you to the next step. So you've got to, and you, you have to have a little bit of life experiences, too. Mm -hmm. So I can't start with 13 and 14-year-olds, you see, because yeah. generally, you know, they're just not into the life experience. But when, a, when somebody's got the heart, and I want to do, I had, come in, I had a guy come in one time, his dad walked in with him, he says, my son's wanted to be a technician. He says, here's his toolbox. He wants a job. He worked for me for 35 years. Wow. You know what I mean? He wanted to be one. Yeah, yeah. And he was a great employee. Wow. See? Uh -huh. So, I mean, it's, you know, and we, you know, at 25 years, we send them on a cruise. At 30 years, we send them out on vacations. You know, we want it to be like, you know, levels of merit, levels of earning, le levels of reward. You know. What are some of the things that you're more most proud of? Uh, well, it is those who do retire. Uh -huh. And we put together a 401k program for them, so we match the dollars they put in. Wow. And the guy retires, his house is paid for, his cars are paid for, he's got a nest egg. Now, who couldn't be happier for a man like that? Right. You right. see what I mean? Yes. Because that's the American dream, right? Yeah. Work, retire. Not for me, but <laughs> <laughs> work and retire. Yeah. And so after, you know, just seeing the kind of people that have been able to retire and been able to have a, get in a motor home, go travel the USA, you know, really do that next level of life, mm. that's, that's really rewarding. Um, for the young people that are struggling with hope, mm -hmm. um, are struggling thinking that they're not going to make it that they can't do it mm -hmm. what what message would you give to them they have to put on their think hat they got to put on this hat that looks around and see you got to see what's out there what mm -hmm. what is available you see you just can't sit isolated you got to you got to move what what is your inner what what inner inner inside you motivate you what brings up that there's a job I'd like to have you know mm -hmm. uh, now and you kind of got to when I was younger I was a very talented musician I used to be in a band I mean I was making a lot of money but I realized something that's not long term mm. you see what I mean I knew somewhere I had to get a job so you worked in a bank for a while yeah you know I was in college uh -huh. I'm knocking down two hundred dollars a week, which today is worth a thousand a week. Maybe I yeah. don't know. That's good. You know, uh, 
But I realized, see, that was just a, what you would call a fling. Mm -hmm. That wasn't going to be a job to be married and have kids <laughs> and no. running around playing all over the place, you see. So what I'm trying to say in this, you've got to get beyond that fling and really say, what is the level of opportunity I want? You know, where, where do I want to plant myself? What mm -hmm. do I want to be? Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, good. a lot of people find intrigue, you know, believe it or not, accounting and numbers, and it's like a huge puzzle. And some people get intrigued by, here's how much came in, here's how much we spent, here's where it went to. You know, it's like, what, what's your wheelhouse? You see what I mean? Uh -huh. And so you've got to have your thinker on and looking around saying, what really raises up a, an interest in my, myself? Yeah, yeah. You know? That's terrific. That's good advice. Yeah. Um, if you could go back in time mm -hmm. to when you were beginning, with the knowledge that you have today, mm -hmm. what would you not do again? <laughs> um, My life's been pretty good. I've, been, I've enjoyed the path. Wow. The only one thing that I look at is I probably would have looked more at real estate. Okay. Because let me, I, I don't know how to say this. There are certain investments you make that are intriguing uh -huh. and you see this big golden pot, but that golden pot goes boom, 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 uh -huh. goes all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Real estate now, right now is not the time to buy real estate. Mm -hmm. So I would say, if you could understand the cycles mm. of life, see, right now we're at a peak cycle in real estate. It's the time to sell. Mm -hmm. People are paying. If you ask three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand for a house, they might pay you three fifty now. Mm. I mean, things are just so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not the time to buy. Right. right. Two thousand eight, when everything crashed was the time to buy. So you literally could have went back and bought property then and kind of housed it. Or even yourself, if you didn't own a home, you could have bought one then. And now, one of the guys that worked for me, I said, go out and buy them now. He went and bought, he sold, doubled his money, he bought, he sold, he doubled his money. Wow. So he ends up from a $89,000 investment to a $600,000 <laughs> wow. equity in about a 15 year period. Uh -huh. Now, I, so there's things like this you got to understand. There's, I get intrigued by that, you see. Uh -huh. And I just think, if I would have bought this, right, back then, uh -huh. what would I have today? Okay. So, you know, I, I just, I think real estate is a good play. Okay. You know, the thing about life, you should always try to own your own home eventually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you should stay out of debt. Debt is a curse. Yeah. You know, I have always had very limited debt. You don't need credit cards at 16% interest. Mm. You know, you, you don't ruin your credit. If you ruin your credit, you're ruined for life. Mm. You really, if you destroy your credit, you're, you're, you're a slave for life. Mm. You never break out of that cycle. 15, 20% interest rate. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. So being a steward of finances, I've always been one. That's yeah. how I got here. Wow. I, I don't spend money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So if you were to look back, what are some of the things that you would do all over again? Uh, probably not work so hard. Okay. <laughs> you know, we do have to remember the family unit. Yeah. Uh, we, did, we did some boating and things like this. Oh, that's great. Uh, but, you know, I missed a few ball games and stuff like that. So that's always, I think that's always on a success man's story, you know. Because uh -huh. when you get to the end, it's not how much you worked, it's how much time you spent with your family and yeah. stuff like that. So you mentioned that on Sundays you spend time with the family. What are some of the things that, that you do uh, on Sundays? Well, we, we, you know, we've kind of got it. Everybody's got their own individual interest now, you know. Uh, yeah. But we always you know, spent time boating, and now all of our kids are boating. Wow. With their families. Uh -huh. um, we were together last night. All 17 of us. Wow, it's uh, amazing. Doing something very important, praying for yeah. this nation. Wow. You know, this nation is at a, a crossroads. It is. And so we were, you know, unified about that. That's incredible. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, there, there, uh, 
good questions uh, that came in, and um, I think I think we're a good we're a good place right here. Okay. Um, yeah, we could talk about how COVID did COVID made a big impact in your business. We've had to have safeguards. We we embraced it right away. Uh, we've had a few employees that had to take two weeks off. Mm -hmm. um, my wife had it. Oh wow! I tested negative. Uh -huh. so I don't have it. So Good. Still had on her a ten day period of yeah. waste. But your wife is fine. She's fine. Oh great! Yeah. Good, good. Uh, you know, she was at a she was in an environment that they weren't try, even trying to social distance. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I think we just have to use wisdom in this hour. But yeah, here's the thing: you can see this what the devil meant for bad, this COVID thing. Yeah. There, there is going to be a good. Yes. Okay. And we're trying to see the good by this is a time when people can look at their families. How can you help your neighbor? How can you help these young children right now that are isolated? We can't leave them alone. Right. It's not good for them. No. They need to get outside and play. We need to help them get in touch with, with reality. We were not made to be islands. No. 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 So how would yeah. be good? Yeah. That's, that's terrific. Yeah. Mr. Lindsay, thank you so much. Yeah. I think this, is, this has been a tremendous time. You've shared a lot of great information with us and to our audience. Thank you so much for, for joining us today um, in this special day. And uh, we'll see you again next, next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Thank you so much. So listen, thank you. Thank you really man. appreciate your time.